Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Bamboo Ceiling Podcast. This week, I have a special guest. Um, he is one of my bestest friends. Uh, we've known each other for a pretty long time. Um, he owns his own chiropractor uh, practice out in Little Canada. Um, and so we just wanted him to come down, drop some knowledge on us. So, uh, Jim, we'll, we'll let you, Dr. Jim, we'll let you introduce yourself a little bit here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Apple. Uh, yeah, so, my sure. name is uh, Jim. Um, I, I do have my own clinic in Little Canada. Um, and I've been a chiropractor for four years, about coming up on five years now. So, yeah, it's been a, quite a journey. It's, uh, it's, it's been uh, tough uh, last year because of COVID, yeah. obviously. But, um, you know, I, I enjoy doing it. Cause it's probably not a, um, it's probably hard because in chiropractor, there's a lot of hands on and yeah. that's probably not a good thing for COVID. Yeah. 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 So people are kind of scared. Yeah. To people, up. people yeah. are scared to come, come in. I uh, and I had a, uh, several patients, you know, calling about their concerns about that. So I totally understand. And, yeah. Um, you know, it's, you just got to move forward. Yeah. Like that, so. Right. Yeah. So on the bamboo podcast, right. Bamboo scene podcast, we always talk about, um, um, expectations from our parents, yeah. right? Especially as as Hmong sons, mm -hmm. um, I know my parents. They all, they expected me to be a doctor, right? Yeah. And you, Jim, you actually <laughs> became a doctor, right? Yeah. Uh, you're one of those stereotypes now. Oh, you, yeah. you you yeah. you uh, you helped the stereotype survive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, no, it's a good thing. It's a, it's an awesome thing. And so, tell us a little about a little bit about that. Like, did your parents expect you to be a doctor, and how, how did that look like? Oh yeah. So from a uh, young age, you know, my parents are always asking us, "What are you guys gonna be? What are you guys gonna be?" And they, I remember my dad wrote it down to like, <laughs> "You have to answer him, and he's gonna write it down." Okay, you're gonna yeah. be a doctor. You're gonna be an engineer, a lawyer. Whatever. So he had all your names down, yep. and then he had next to it yeah. what you were gonna be. <laughs> yep. So I did say doctor because that's yeah. what that was the answer that I uh, uh, that he would want to hear, right? Yeah. But back then, I'm like, okay, I don't know what I want to be, but that's what I'm gonna say so that yeah, you know, he'll be happy. Yeah. And, um, you know, I growing up, I didn't think I was gonna go that route until I got more uh until high school high school is where I started focusing okay yeah I think I'm I want to be like a medical doctor yeah and then I think the more that I learned about it um um being a medical doctor I was kind of like okay maybe that's not for me because I myself I don't take medication I've always been that <laughs> way you know so I'm like I can't prescribe somebody medication yeah. and I'm not even gonna take it too so that I kind of strayed away from that too and then um you know, plus with college, uh, you know, college, we all went to college together. And yeah. uh, that was like a um, fun time for us, too, because um, fun time and tough time because, you know, I was going to school, but trying to hang out with you guys, too. But, yeah, back to the um, uh, the expectations. Right. So our parents, my parents were just like any other Hmong parents, you know, the typical Hmong parents where they want us to be doctors and lawyers. And that was a lot of a lot of pressure on us. Um, I think especially for me because I, uh, my parents, they, uh, they had this big expectation of me because I had good grades in school. Um, I was always doing well in school. Um, and then I was, that was always the answer that, that I'd give them. Yeah, I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> be I'm going to be a doctor, you know? So, yeah. um, so like as you were like going through high school and college, did you like, did you actually want to be a doctor or like, is it something where, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming your parents, your dad influenced you. Right. But yeah. like you yourself, did you want to be a doctor? Though? You know, I, it was, I was, I partially wanted to be a doctor and then, um, the other half, uh, half of me like wanted to explore more. Like, yeah. okay, what do I, what do I really want to do? Right. So, yeah. um, um, I, I was always interested in the health field. So that was always going to be like, yeah, that's going to be where I was going to make my uh, career um, yeah. in. But then being a doctor was was just part of that. It wasn't like, okay, that's what I'm going for. That's a, um, that was my goal. Uh, so growing up, I think I um, I think I kind of just uh, learned more about 
uh, other uh, other professions, right? So yeah. not there's not just medical, uh, th- not just the medical doctor. There's also like uh, you know the pharmacist, the yeah. den- uh, dentist, and a uh, chiropractor, and right. all those other uh, doctors too. So, right. um, but yeah, I can talk briefly about how I became a chiropractor. Yeah, too, let, so. yeah let me know. I I guess I never, I've never really asked you yeah. about this. You know, like I know uh, originally. You were gonna be a medical doctor, right? And, yeah, originally that was you know, that was the plan. Yeah. And then I I remember uh, you went, and then after that you went into like um, you did some interning as like a LPN. Is it LPN? I forget what it is. Oh, so yeah, so I went to I did um, I did some PCA stuff. PCA stuff, um, yeah. And then uh, 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 CNA. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did some CNA. Yep, yeah. So. Certified nursing assistant. I yep. did that because I was gonna uh, go into nursing school because mm. that got me interested. And then, um, and then also like during that time too, I was trying to I because my brother is a DNR. Um, so I um, I uh, when they opened up the state trooper thing too. Remember I was doing that too. Yeah. For a little, I, I was yep. trying that out for a little bit too. Yeah. Um, but then I, I'm kind of glad I never got into that. Um, nothing against them, but it's just it's a very stressful job and. I would, I, you know, I, I have all the respect in the world for them and I would, I wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm kind of glad, um, I didn't go that route, but yeah, so I did do, um, I did, uh, do the CNA for a little bit. Um, but then, um, the reason why I went to chiropractic was, so I was fixing my car one day and then <laughs> <laughs> I hurt my back really bad. Uh, and I told this story to a couple other, uh, um, friends throughout the years too but i hurt my back really bad and i had to go to uh, work that day um and then i could barely walk and i'm walking around um just oh you know it was so hard to walk around so my clinic manager at that time i was working at a dental um uh dental uh, clinic at this time yep. so my clinic manager was like dude you know just go home because uh, i can see you're in a lot of pain you know and i'm like yeah i i can barely walk so I'm, I'm, as I'm walking out, my office manager, uh, she happens to see me and she's like, Hey, what's going on with you? Um, you know, I'm like, Oh, I hurt my back really bad. Um, I, I can barely walk and fixing my car, you know? So she's like, Hey, you know, you should go see my chiropractor. Um, and I was like, chiropractor? I, I, I knew nothing about chiropractic at that point. Um, and this was like about a year before I went to chiropractic school. So I was like, uh, okay, sure. I'll I'll give it a, a try. And so, I did. I made an appointment. I went and I went in and saw the chiropractor, and then he adjusted me, and I immediately felt the relief. And I was like, "Whoa, I didn't know that this is what they do, right?" So yeah. that's kind of that's what got me um, uh, interested in chiropractic. So I was like, "Okay, I need to do a little bit more research on this uh, profession because that made me like change my mind." you know, immediately about, okay, do I want to go medical doctor or do I want to, or nursing? I'm sorry. At that time, do I want to go into nursing or go into chiropractic? So I did more research and I'm like, Hey, you know, this kind of aligns with what I, I like. Right. So, cause I, I don't, um, take a lot of medication and I'm more about the natural, um, healthcare. And at this point, how long had you been in school already? Like, Oh, so right. at this point, I was I had already graduated from undergrad, yep. and I was working, um, just working like four years. Yeah, and um, and this was I was still taking classes here and there. Yeah. Um, um, and then uh, just just to keep my mind fresh and yeah. prepare for like nursing school, co- nursing school if I did go in there. Yep. Uh, so I was still taking just some classes here and there. Um, and then. Th- at that point, oh, I started doing more studying about uh, chiropractic school, so uh, or the profession itself, and then that's when I was like, okay, you know, I think I'm gonna try and get into this school because I I really like what they do. So yeah, I sent in my application, and then I can't remember how long, but probably a month or two later, I got the ex- uh, acceptance letter, and then they gave me a call. And they actually wanted me to go in that spring, but I was like, "Whoa, that's a little too soon for me. I'm not ready." <laughs> so, um, and I I waited till the fall to to enroll, and then yeah, uh, that's kind of how it all started. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I know a lot of uh, chiropractors actually has uh, similar stories too about like, 
oh, they, they got adjusted and they got them interested. But I actually, that actually really did happen to me. And yeah. that's how I got interested in chiropractic. Um, yeah, chiropractic career. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Like, you know, I think we all go through um, like a journey of trying to figure out what speaks to us, right? Yeah. yeah. And you finally found something that yeah. spoke to you. Yeah. 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 yeah Cause I think I, I wanted to be a freaking teacher, right? Yeah, yeah. And my dad was like, no, you got to be a doctor somewhere. Yeah. And so that's why when I was in college, I was trying to get into like the pharmacy program. Yeah. Ooh, that was no good. <laughs> yeah. So don't do things for your parents or yeah. solely just for your parents. Oh, yeah. yeah. You definitely got to do it uh, for yourself too. I mean, it's great to make them happy, but then at the same time, you got to live for yourself because you – it's you're going to be the only one that's going to make yourself happy. Yeah. Um, so um, if you're doing something that you don't like, you know, that's not going to make you happy. It's right. going to be a, it's going to be challenging going to work every day. Yeah. So it's definitely a lot harder. Yeah. 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 So your dad had that list, right? Mm -hmm. Did he ever get to mark it off then? Or like, did he ever get to see you? Like, no. Yeah. So unfortunately, so I was in school about my, I want to say second year in school. And then my dad, my dad had been having like a lot of uh, uh, health problems, and then he he passed away uh, during that time too. And it was a con yeah. it was a very tough time because yeah, but yeah, during that time I it was like uh, my finals, and, and it was, <sighs> I was like um, my mom and uh, my mom and I we were switching, uh, you know, uh, watching my dad overnight because my dad had a hard time sleeping and he always needed to be flipped because at this time he was. Uh, he wasn't very mobile, so yeah. we had to flip him so he doesn't get any bed sores or anything. So I was getting two, three hours of sleep um, for like, man, three, three months. Uh, yeah. It was very tough for my mom and I. Um, and my mom had gotten hospitalized because of that, too. She got so sick that uh, the doctors are like, okay, she's got to stay away from my dad. So it was just, just from like the stress. Yeah, and from the, the stress and, you know, it the lack of sleep that was the biggest thing the lack of sleep my yeah. mom and i we i was so tired but i was uh, having to go to school and study yeah. at the same time so that was very tough a uh, very tough time for me uh, but i'm kind of glad i went through it because um uh and you know i'm kind of glad that my mom they actually uh, removed my mom too because yeah. she was she was going to go downhill too if they 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 hadn't done that as, as that was the doctor's or like okay she's got to stay away and then yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was a tough time. But uh, you know, I mean, you know, the when I, my dad passed, you know, kind of not that it, uh, it was. It was like you know, fine. Well, at least he's not hurting anymore. Yeah. My dad had a lot of uh, aches and pain. A lot of uh, he was dealing with a lot of things at that point too. So, so he wasn't mobile anymore. But like, was he still like responsive? Would you still be able to like yeah. talk to him? And, yep. You can yeah. still you can still have conversation with him. But then yeah. his um, he like. He, his speaking was um, kind of diminished. Yeah. Like he, you can't really understand him as much, but he can still speak and everything. Uh, yeah. He can still uh, tell you what he wants and everything. He's still cognitively, he's still there. Yeah. But, um, so were you close to your dad? You know, I, th I don't think any of us were really close to no. uh, my dad because my dad was a very strict person, mm. um, you know, and he just grew up that way. That's, that's, that's what they know. They know that... Um, uh, he was kind of, uh, kind of like uh, I, th I think he he he's kind of like a military, uh, you know, a drill sergeant or yeah, something. Yeah, it's like what that. they were modeled. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, yeah. Um, so my dad was really strict on us, and it was tough to it's tough to be close to him. Um, um, you know, thinking back now, you know, you you always like, oh, I wish I would have like uh, spent more time talking to him, asking him questions. Um, but you know, the thing is like you're younger you don't understand so it's okay you gotta kind of move on from that um and then just uh so for example i said my mom so that's that's something that i'm not taking for granted now so i'm asking my mom more questions talking to her more yeah um, so it's just things like that yeah but yeah my dad was he was as strict as they come though. yeah we've all we've all met those dads our dads are all <laughs> somewhat that way yeah anyways yeah. right yeah um, that's crazy. Yeah, I, it's weird. Like me and my dad, like we finally have a relationship now, right? Yeah. yeah. 
but it took a lot of work. Oh yeah. I, yeah. It took a lot of work. I remember the first time I told him that uh I loved him. He just stared at me. He's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Yeah, right." It's like, yeah, it's pretty weird. Oh, yeah. like, it's a, it's a tough one with these, um, for lack of better word, we, we call them OGs, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. We call them OGs, and um, some of them take uh, offense to that. Yeah. But for me, right, I call them OG has like a, a term of endearment right, right? Yeah. like like the older generation yeah. that i learned from yeah yeah but it's funny because now we're like the old <laughs> <laughs> we sure are we sure are yeah okay well then so your dad passed um when you like when you graduated right as a doctor did, did you still feel like you did it for your dad or you know <clears throat> Yep, there's a part of me that um, always felt that way, you know, like, hey, you know, Dad, I, I, I did uh, get a doctor's degree, you know, kind of like what you wanted. Yeah. Uh, but then at the same time, I, I also thought to myself, like, okay, this is what I wanted too. So, um, I'm like, I hope I made him proud, and you know, I'm proud of myself that I made it this far too. So yeah. it, it's, it's kind of like, um, I felt like I, I did it for both of us. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. Even even when I got in, he was he was pretty um, happy that I got in. So yeah. I I know that um, I made him proud. Yeah. yeah. Was college hard though? Like for you? Yeah. It was. Oh yeah. yeah. Definitely. Undergrad was the toughest because uh. So you know you know we all went together. Yeah. And then um I ended up being the only one going and left going and that, yeah. that was tough for me because um you know i couldn't focus because i was trying to like just hang out with uh friends and yeah um it was just you know i i didn't have uh, many friends in college because you know out of out of uh high school we just stuck together and yeah was, i was like okay that's my group of friends it's it's tough to middle school dude like, yeah yeah since middle yeah. school yeah yeah so it was tough for me um and i i think i like for for me my focus uh wasn't there like it was in high school yeah because in high school it was a lot easier for me to just focus and do work but when it when it came to college it was in high school it was almost like it we, i don't think we ever competed yeah. right but we always wanted to get good grades because right, we knew right. we all got good grades yeah you yeah. know so it's never it was i think it was more of what we surrounded ourselves with yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. i think so too and then i think with college too you get so much uh, independence right? mm. like nobody's gonna be like hey you need to get your uh work done so yeah. i think um i kind of didn't know how to yeah. um uh, to do that right so, that, yeah. yeah so we i kind of just like let a lot of my work slip away yeah. um, i started like procrastinating and started not studying doing last minute things yeah. and yeah, so college was tough. It so what kept you going? Like what what kept because I know I dropped out what after my second sophomore year, like mm -hmm. the beginning of my junior year, I dropped out. Right. So what kept you going? Like Yeah, I think for me it was like um, you know, I I thought about my parents a lot, right? Um, like, hey, you know, they took us here and they want us to get a better life, so the least I can do is finish my degree, um, and then I'll, I'll figure it out from there. Yeah. So th I think that was the biggest thing for me was, okay, just finish it. Just to finish, it yeah. can't, uh, it, it's hard, but I, I can do it. That's pretty much my thought. Like I can do this. It's, it can't be impossible because there's tons of people that can, uh, that are getting degrees as well too. Yeah. So, and plus I was like, I've been going for this, uh, for this long already. I might as well finish it. So that's kind of like what made me continue. Um, and then I also was just like, okay, I, I got to do this for myself too. Like I, yeah. I can't, I can't uh, just only do it when I have friends in school with me. <laughs> so I just kept going and um, finished. That's hard. Like as I'm thinking about it in high school, we, like I said, we had pretty good grades. Yeah. And when I got to college, did you feel like, cause we I wouldn't say we were like the smart kids, but I mean, we had, we had got good grades, right. like yeah. all of us got good mm -hmm. grades. And so when we got to college, I felt dumb because yeah. there was people that, um, 
knew like they knew what i knew but they knew it in detail right you know yep. and so i felt dumb yep. and in co- in high school i always felt like the smart kid because everyone yeah. always copied off yeah. of me and they always copied <laughs> off of you right and and i would copy <laughs> off of you too <laughs> and like uh we smelled i always felt like the smart kid but when i got into college it was different like yeah. i had to study yeah. Right? Yep. It didn't help that we were like goofing off all the time oh, yeah. too. But that I had to study to to even get okay, decent grades. Yeah. yeah. And I felt dumb. Like, yep. did you feel the same way? I, yep, like, I felt the same way. I yeah. felt like, whoa, I am I am not on this level at all. Yeah. You know? So I felt the same way, yeah. I think part of it is from our um schooling. I don't think uh they prepare us for college. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they made us they um they got us through uh, high school, yeah, um, but it definitely did not prepare. Because if college. high school felt pretty easy, right? Mm-hmm. Did it high feel school e- was really easy, and we took all the CP classes, yeah. and it still felt pretty yeah. easy, yeah, right? It's, it's easy, and yeah. um, so uh, you know, going into college, you're thinking, okay, if it's similar to that, then mm-hmm. you know, taking those CP classes. Mm-hmm. Right? If it's similar to that, then I'll be all right. But no, it definitely moved at a much faster pace. Yeah. Um, and I, like I said, I, I don't think our schools, like the public schools, I don't think they prepared uh, kids yeah. uh, well enough to um, uh, for college. Well, at that time, I don't know how, how it is now, but right. at that time, definitely did not prepare. Well, our high school. Our hate mail, hate mail, send it to Dr. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but, um, you know, I, I'm, I think, I think it's better now. I think, yeah. uh, cause I mean, it, for example, in the Hmong community, you can just see that there's a lot of kids that are going to college and getting their degrees nowadays. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot better. And I think people are more prepared. Um, and they're even uh, even parents are preparing their kids better now, too. Like for us. like Yeah, parents, I think that transition was terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Like there was a terrible transition. Like I just remember first day of college, you get there and it's just like free reign. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I, I still, and I always tell this story too. Like, yeah, like even like, l- like being prepared for like college life. Yeah. Right. Knowing not to sign up for credit cards. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like first day of college, there's all these tables and they're signing us up for college yeah. uh, credit cards. Yeah. And of course we sign up for it and then we get ourselves in debt too. You know? yeah. And it's like, you get a free ride to college yeah. yet. You still get yourself in debt. You know? yeah. Yeah. And just that free reign of doing things. Yeah. And then when I got punched in the mouth, just like, no f- figuring out that shoot, I'm not the smartest kid, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. And it's just like a really hard transition. Oh yeah. 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 yeah I agree. Cause uh, you know, high school you're like okay this is um you know easy stuff and yeah. you know, i had teachers you know having me teach the classroom so I was like, okay <laughs> this is college yeah different story you know yeah. i felt like i was like one of the dumbest kids yeah. in there so unfortunately um <laughs> uh but then you know it and it just became like okay if i can get c's in this class then i'll be fine yeah uh, versus like in high school it was okay i gotta get an a Right. And then, yeah, I that that was the biggest transition for me, and it was tough for me too, cause um, I was used to getting A's, and yeah. then in uh, college I was like, okay, I'm getting C's, <laughs> and I even got D's, you know, and I'm like, wow, this is this is tough, you know, yeah. um, um, and I think part of it is I I blame myself a lot, cause it was just bad study study habits, um, like we we just never got um got down to how to study correctly and we never uh, had to yeah yeah yep yeah. that's true we never had to in high school and then when it came to college it was a different story and, yeah uh, that's what that's what made it hard but you know i mean i got through it but you know it, it's tough for everybody you know and i always say this to um i, I don't want to say that schools don't go to school but you know schooling is not for everybody too because this you got to really focus and you got to stay on track uh, otherwise, you're just gonna go and uh, fail and waste your money. Yeah, it's hard because uh, c- the current education system is uh, built on hey, take all this information, remember it, and then spit it back out, right? right yeah. And as I've been doing other things in my life, you know, come to find out people do have different learning styles, yeah, right? Yeah. And so, yeah, uh, I think that's true, right? Yeah. I think um, college isn't for everyone no you know? it's not yeah. um like for me uh 
even going to chiropractic school, right? I I've always uh, since uh, my undergrad, right? I've always had like a hard time just reading and uh, concentrating, um, and then just more recently, I I realized that I'm more of an uh, uh, I I learn easier by listening. So I started listening more to audiobooks, and that I'm like yeah. okay, that makes it so much easier for me to learn versus me sitting there and trying to read and uh, trying to learn it because I would uh, find myself just going over the reading multiple times just to learn it. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, sometimes, it, like you're saying, everybody learns differently. So it's sometimes you, you just need to, uh, to listen instead of like um, uh, reading. So, yeah, yeah, sometimes college can be tough for you if, if that's your learning style too. Yeah. So would you say college was worth it then? Um, like to your for your experience was college worth it yeah definitely because i think um you know it gives you that experience right i think it it makes you grow up like for me it made me grow up um it made me feel like okay i need to take more responsibility of myself um of uh whether it's whether it's just uh being responsible with your homework or being responsible with your financials things like that yeah uh, it's a it's a it can be a tough learning curve uh, like you're saying about the credit card stuff, yeah, that was that was just stupid on us because we didn't know any better. Yeah. Um. So it was a it's a good learning curve. Um. And then also just you know going to college is, or going to school, um, it just gives you more knowledge. Um, it definitely is. Um, for but the the tough thing for me is the financial part of it. Um. For, yeah. So for. Uh, chiropractic school that it, um, I have a big old loan <laughs> that that's the tough part for <laughs> I me. Bet. yeah um, so is it six figures yeah it is it, yeah, oh my yeah, definitely god definitely six figures I, I this is what I tell everybody I have a house that I don't own so <laughs> um, oh and I'm paying god. for it oh my so, god yeah, yeah. It, it's tough it's it's expensive um, uh, graduate school things like that um, yeah so definitely I would um you know, think uh, think about that uh, before you uh, continue. But I would definitely encourage anybody yeah. who's interested to either reach out from uh, reach out uh, to me or you know reach out to anybody that has done it. Um, they'll give you insight on it. Yeah, I think in this current system, uh, education, a college education, is still worth it. Just yeah. because this system still requires right. that piece of paper, yeah. right? I think it's starting to change a little bit yeah um it's starting to change where you might not need it as much as you think you do right um but in this current system it's still it's still worth it yeah to have a college degree yep and you know a lot of a lot of you know if you're looking for that good job a lot of uh those jobs they require that four-year degree but yeah i'm i'm sure you probably know this too a lot of uh technical schools right there's less people doing that now and there, there's a lot of job openings for those so if yeah. you're not if you don't want to do that for you there's always that two-year option yeah to uh, get a technical degree and go do that instead you know? right. so uh, there's a lot of options out there um uh and also with just the four-year degree too sometimes that's not even enough now too uh, yeah. so you have to uh, consider that um continue your education either graduate school master's degree or something like that too right and you know again that's all with financials too you have to think about all those um before you make a de uh, decision yeah so what what advice would you give out to that asian kid with the asian parents yeah. <laughs> that right now all they want is for that kid to be a doctor right and that kid might not like have the motivation to be a doctor like what what kind of advice would you give out to that kid yeah or I, lady you know yeah. son or daughter yeah. yeah i think uh you know you you really do have to do uh what's best for you because if you do it for your parents you're never going to be happy um you're always gonna uh, like i was saying in the beginning you're you're gonna drag your uh, uh your feet to work every day yeah and then you're not gonna enjoy it and it, it's never gonna make you happy so bottom line is you really do have to uh you know, sit and talk to your parents. Uh, I know it's tough. It's tough to sit and talk to your parents and have that conversation. I, un I unfortunately never had that conversation with my dad. Um, but my mom, I did. I do talk to her now. I, I, I do explain to her, 
like, hey, mom, you know, there's more than just doctors and lawyers. Um, and th you can make money in all sorts of other uh, careers, right? And y you guys just don't know about it because um, that's not what you guys were taught. Uh, you guys are just taught that, oh, yeah, doctors and lawyers is what's considered successful. But yeah. there's so many ways to describe success. And, you know, making money is not – it can be a success to one person, but it's not to another. Um, success, success is described in uh, – is described on how you uh, how you describe it yourself. It's like for me, if, if having a family, uh, having kids – um, that makes me feel successful then that's successful to me you know so everybody's uh, definition of success is different yeah so that's what i would tell the kid i would tell them you know do what's going to make you happy because if you don't then you're never going to be happy right so. yeah it's i it's funny i think you're right like successful success really is defined um on your terms right yeah. um although i still view graduating with the college degree as success right yeah, yeah yeah of course and it's been hard like because mm -hmm. like uh i dropped out and I, i'm you know i've done a million other ventures now right. but i'm still like searching yeah. to do that you know and yeah. so to me that that is what success is right you know? and yeah. so yeah i'll eventually have to walk down that road yeah. and figure that out and you know part of it is also i think uh why you have that mindset is partly because of our parents right yeah, our, for sure. our parents yeah. pushed it so hard like yeah. like that's their definition of success and if you don't have it you feel like you're a failure to them and so sometimes we get uh, hard on ourselves because of that and i think that's kind of what you're doing uh you, you make it you feel like you're you're a failure because you couldn't get there um but you know, like it, like you're saying, you know, it, but it's never too late. If you yeah. feel like that's gonna make you feel successful, then that's where you gotta. That's where you gotta do. Yeah, you know, for a long time, I thought that it was just because my parents put that on me, mm -hmm. but it kind of like manifested into my own thought, right? right? Mm -hmm. Where it kind of, but I, I wouldn't say I I would let that totally define me or right. define what success is to me, but it is part of it. Like yeah. I I it is part of it, and. For now, and right now, it is like my thought and my right. want now. It finally became my thought yeah, and my want yeah. now, right? And so, um, slowly, I have been work. I've been working towards that, and maybe this time around, it'll be you know, it'll be because yeah. I want to, you yeah. know, instead yeah. of just doing it for my parents. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it's one step at a time. You, yeah, you just gotta get your foot in there, and then. Yeah. I think that's that's the biggest thing is just taking a step and doing it. Otherwise, you're just going to keep putting it off. You got to just yeah. be like, okay, I'm going to do it, and then this is going to be the day that I, I do it. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, so you graduated. Now what are you doing? Like, Yeah, so I've had my <coughs> clinic. Uh, I opened up my clinic uh, uh, just a few months after I graduated in 2016. Yep. And then I, I'm – gonna be about five years now in july since i've opened yeah um so yeah i i'd say um i've, I've my business ha business has been up and down um uh, down obviously because of covid but you know i, I enjoy it because people come in with uh whatever they have you know neck pain back pain uh arm arm pain you know fingers uh foot you know whatever it is that they have i i help treat them and you know i i feel good about that because they're coming in they feel they feel hurt they feel bad and then they leave they're leaving happy um and that's kind of the biggest thing that's what keeps me going it's like hey you know i made some i made somebody's day you know because they're leaving happy at the end of uh their uh their treatment so yeah yeah but that yeah that's what i'm doing now and and i'm also doing uh i'm you know i i looked around uh the youtube last year to see if there was any like uh, uh any uh recordings of uh for the Hmong people right so uh, uh on like exercises stretches things that they can do to help themselves yeah so i started doing that this year um just recording in english and in Hmong. that's about, cool yeah about like uh so for example uh, in february i did posture and then this month i did um low back pain so I, I'm doing that uh, now. I'm trying to do one every month, and you know, so people can 
uh, either give it to their parents, have them parents, uh, you know, look at my videos. Because I think this is going to help everybody, um, whether you're, you don't, you have low back pain or not. Um, I think uh, statistically, almost everybody gets low back pain eventually, sometime in their life. Yeah. Uh, so this is, these are just some simple stretches that people can do to help themselves, especially nowadays with COVID, everybody's sitting. So yeah. sitting causes a lot of low back pain. So as a chiropractor, what is one like practical advice you would you can give to just everyone? Yeah, uh, you know, movement, because movement is what's going to help your body, uh, um, help your body from deteriorating because if you're sitting around a lot, you're, you're not moving around a lot. Your joints are going to stiffen. Your muscles are going to stiffen. You're just going to have less mobility. So movement is going to be key to um, being healthier. Yeah, yeah. movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to thank you for coming on the, the podcast. Um, I'm sure we'll we'll link up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll link yeah. up. We'll do some uh, collabs together yeah. for sure. Yeah, appreciate you having me on. Yeah. yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode of the Bamboo Ceiling, we'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give us a review on iTunes. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at hashtag the Bamboo Ceiling. Until next time, use your voice.